Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Hiring Lens with myself and my three good friends. Um, really, I just want to say first off, thanks very much for tuning in. We would love to hear where everywhere sorry everyone where they are at the moment where they're watching from so please do drop a comment as to tell us where you're from um we also want this to be a massively interactive session so please do throughout the whole session do not wait do not sit on your hands make sure that you ask all the questions you want if you've got a statement you want to make please do throw it in we love to hear from everybody um this session is actually all about mental health and well-being, and we're also going to be touching on how that relates to also the workplace. Um, so, yeah, I think without further ado, let's let's kick things off. Um, guys, why, why don't we start with, with Christine and work our way around, and then I'll go last. Perfect. Hello, everyone. I'm Christine Trippy with The Wise Pineapple, author of Yes is the Answer, and I am just ready to listen and learn today. I'm excited to be here, and I, I love all of you chiming in with your questions. Claudia is going to be an amazing resource for us today, so let's do this. Hi, everybody. Jeremy, I'm playing producer today, so if you see my eyes flying around, it's because I'm looking at a million things. <laughs> um, but um, I'm with Gecko Hospitality. I am a hospitality headhunter in the state of Florida. And uh, like everybody else, I'm really excited to dig in. So um, if you are watching right now, just uh, pop some comments in the thread and I'll pull them up. Amazing. And uh, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Aidan. I'm the managing director of a UK finance recruitment business called Ayla Recruitment. As always, super excited to, to be on the show and um, really really intrigued and excited for what Claudia is going to share with us today. I think mental health and well-being is such a huge topic and it's one that doesn't get addressed enough in terms of how you manage it in the workplace. So super excited to welcome her and um, yeah, really looking forward to a lot of questions from everyone watching as well. Definitely. Um... Okay, so coming on to me. So my name's Thomas Finn. I'm the managing director of Edwards and Finn, and also the host of the YouTube channel ENF TV. Um, today we have a very, very good friend of mine, uh, somebody who's actually helped me with my uh, personal journey, which is why this is actually quite close to my heart. If you saw my LinkedIn page, uh, sorry, post today, um, Claudia is one of the most amazing individuals. Has um, sort of climbed to the top of the sort of. I suppose, top echelons of hospitality, traveled the world uh, in that sort of luxury space, um, and then sort of had a massive change of of work and lifestyle. And it was all based around her own mental health and well-being journey. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what she's got to say on it, um, and also hearing what everybody else and their, you know, their thoughts on it, and maybe any questions. Because at the end of the day, it's something that we're all going through, no matter what sort of stage in life we're at, we're all going through our own journeys and it's all relative to ourselves. But the one good thing is that we're talking about it more. I think it's something that is a subject that for such a long time wasn't spoken about enough. And the fact that we're able to create forums like this and discussions like this, I just find so, so powerful. And I can't think of three better people to do it with. So yeah, I feel really privileged right now. And, and I think Aiden, you said it the other day, I think it's one of the most anticipated um, sort of sessions that we've had in quite some time. Um, so yeah, um, do we do we have Claudia in the waiting room yet, Jeremy, or, or are we? we ah, ha, 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 look at this! I was waiting for the intro. Um, <laughs> there, there we go, <laughs> Claudia. I've I've given you a little bit of an intro, but I, I to be honest with you, I don't want to speak for you because I think you articulate it so incredibly well. So I'm I'm going to pass it over to you. And as I say, anybody throughout the the uh, sort of discussion, please do tell us where you're listening from and let us know if you've got any questions because. Yeah, this lady is pretty amazing. Thank you. I feel very humbled about this intro. Um, thank you for being uh, with you here on the show. And um, it's really important to speak about um, well-being, emotional well-being, mental health. Um, yes, it makes me smile. But I have to say, once upon a time, I was important. Um, I was running a business, a luxury um, business hotel in the luxury hospitality space. And my life was work, 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 proving myself, showing up in my own perfection and running around the world 24 seven was normal way of um, being. And life took its, 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 its joy. It was amazing to um, be flying high, I must admit. 
it was always my dream as a little girl. I wanted to be on the top of my profession in travel, um, luxury hospitality. So my dream came true. But I want to share with you a little story when everything where my dream got, yeah, a big scratch. I was again um, on my travels. Um, usually I would be away from Monday to Friday, actually. And this time it was a short trip. It was just a hop from London to Paris. And I checked in at the um, Ritz in Paris. I think we all know it's a beautiful hotel, an amazing location. And as I was traveling on business, um, I always was treated um, in a most um, amazing way. I mean, VIP, red carpet, inverted commas was just the norm. Um, one thing I need to say is that I never took it for um, took it for granted, but it was a very nice byproduct. But I knew that it was in exchange. This treatment was an exchange for business. So um, I checked in um, as usual, a suite, and very often um, a suite was even. It was overwhelming because you can't just put your stuff anywhere because in the morning when you have to leave at five o'clock for the next appointment, you can't even find your stuff. So a suite on business, um, maybe not the good, um, the best idea on business or on leisure is something different. Anyway, um, the I was working like normal um, during the day, my normal working day. And then in the evenings, I would do my second shift because I was in a global role. So obviously one time zone got to sleep, the next time zone woke up. So I was literally on my Blackberry time, not the iPhone, it was Blackberry time, um, 24 seven. And on this particular day, evening, I was exhausted. I had I got up at five o'clock in the morning to be at the meeting at 9.30. And it was about 10 o'clock and I fell asleep. And um, next morning I woke up again at six o'clock because I had a breakfast meeting. And I walked into the bathroom of that suite, um, imagining a beautiful April morning. The sun was coming in from one side um, of, the, of the bathroom window and was the bathroom, the marble was just lightening up double sink, very spacious, a big mirror. And Claudia walked into the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and she was shocked. What happened was she suddenly looked at her face and she discovered an imprint of her blackberry on the right cheek. It was very clear to me that something happened, something outside had changed in the world, but Claudia got very stuck in her way of being, in the space of proving myself, of being the good girl. Um, and I suddenly realized that the world has changed, so I have to change as well, because nobody else will change for myself. The whole, um, suddenly the whole need to prove myself and to show up in perfection every day, almost you know, 24 seven, not quite, but you get the point. Um, suddenly I realized that I can't hold up that image. And that was a moment where I started to really um, s sort of feel that my dream I built was actually built on beliefs um, of my, of the past, of who I wanted to be. Um, and I started to realize that I needed to go on a journey, on an inner journey to make some changes. And on the topic of um, mental health, um, mental health is can be seen as something very, um, how do you say, daunting, but what is happening in society right now to bring my story back to actually why it's so relevant, um, exhaustion and the need to prove and the need to reinvent and the need to show up in a world which is rapidly changing is so exhausting and it's so demanding on us that our mental health, our emotional health is suffering badly. And I pause for a moment for um, the presenters and my cohort, my hosts to um, interject some questions. Well, I think um, I think we can all relate with regards to 
trying to find that um, sort of balance because, uh, as as I've said previously, I think um, you know we're we're all striving for greatness. None of us want to be mediocre. All of us want to achieve something. We've all got goals, and um, maybe it's our personalities or or us as human beings that we we will break ourselves if you know if we if we feel there's a chance of achieving it. Um, I suppose my question would be to you um how how did you cope with that realization because that's got to be tough to have to have tried to climb that ladder for such a long time and then to come to a realization that you know whatever it is i'm not actually truly happy um that for anybody i can imagine you know for me i've got aspirations with with where i'm going but and i'm you know <laughs> again i don't think i'm the only business owner here that, that was trying their absolute best to do everything they possibly can to achieve what they want to but it does it, it can affect you behind the scenes it, you know not everything is 100 percent happy all the time how do you cope and how have you been able to i suppose balance that with your with your own mindset this is a very very important question um tom you asked because when i realized that something was off and something was no longer perfect in my world, I actually was not ready to accept it. I pushed that thought away. I was frightened of the thought because I was so ingrained, my self-image was so ingrained into my job, into what I um, created in, in that space of luxury hospitality, my image that I could not see anything else other than that person I was at the time. For, so for some years, I just continued lying to myself. I said, everything is perfect. I love the job. Oh my God, everything is just, um, I was lying to myself. And that actually added more, more stress. And just to demonstrate what happens when you don't ignore the calling of your, I call it soul, but you can use any word you wish, then something else will add. One day I was um, in Frankfurt, Friday afternoon, I was boarding a plane as normal, going home for the weekend. And I always framed that last flight on a Friday as I was as I would be sitting in my living room and you know watching a movie or reading the you know a book. So I always took a book to make this a little bit normal to me flying home at eight o'clock on a Friday in the evening. I was getting on the plane, I was um, wrapping myself up sitting there, and suddenly I had this overwhelming feeling of a fear a fear of flying and it just hit me like that and if you imagine um, flying was part of my life and suddenly from nowhere this feeling came so I had to have another knock to start again questioning myself and that was a process for me guys have you got any other if you got any questions yeah Claudia um I I feel like your story is one of having an epiphany where you kind of realize all of a sudden this isn't what I want anymore. A lot of people that will be watching our show will be on a path where they're working hard and they may not get to a point where they have an epiphany, epiphany as such or a real change of direction, but um, they may get to a point where all of a sudden they get burnout or it's far too much and they've overcommitted themselves. So my question for you now, having gone through something similar and obviously the journey you're on now, what advice would you give to those that are listening uh, to help them steady where they're going and maybe uh, tips for managing stress or managing um, that journey they're on? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is really important is never, ever ignore any signs of discomfort. Um, there is a reason why you feel um, you know, stressed. When, you're, when we feel stressed, there is an aspect, a part of us no longer in balance. So we must listen to it. And now um, there are many tools how to bring us back into balance. For example, 
meditation, um, for example, breath work, for example, um, walking in nature. So there are many tools now and it is our own responsibility to make time because that's another illusion. You know, we say we don't have time. I have to work, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours or whatever, or whatever our conditioned mind is telling us. But if we don't um, allow ourselves and give permission to ourselves to take five minutes maybe to, you know, go for a walk or to just sit in silence, nobody will give this to us. We have to empower ourselves. And stress is the first sign that something is out of balance. And if we don't listen, it gets worse. It got worse for me. I, I ignored my callings. I ignored the knocks because I was too stubborn. I was too ingrained in my personality in that, you know, belief of success and that, that recognition. It's the recognition which I was striving for. And that is a constant job to be recognized. It's pretty damn hard work. And you're, you're actually giving the power to other people over your well-being. And this is very common in, in business. You know, we want to be seen of being successful. We want to be seen. We have an image, a self-image about us. And we have to, we want to hold it up because that's where we attach our self-worth. Without that image, who am I being? And I went through that. I left um, the corporate world. It was painfully difficult because suddenly I was nobody. My, my, my suitcase was standing in the corner alone, looking at me. We cried together. We lost everything. But whilst we lose everything, we win everything. Or we not win, it's not the right word. We actually then this journey of, of remembrance of the joy of who we truly are is then having a space to come through. I love that. My question for you is very similar to Aiden's that for those of us who we, we do love our, our industry, we love what we do, but it's so overwhelming sometimes. What, where do you, how do you begin? And, you know, we hear all the time to take those breaks and, and, and take care of ourselves and, and put ourselves first. Where, where was it for you? Where, how did you start implementing that? What are some strategic tips that, that people can really put into, you know, the, the demand of this industry and this business. And, and for many of us, it's, it's just who we are. We couldn't imagine living without it and living in another world, but, but yet we need to take care of ourselves. So where would you say to begin with that mental health? The, um, firstly, it is really different, very different for each of us. We find that inner peace in different, um, in different ways. Mm -hmm. But what I highly recommend, at, which is really important to create space in your day, it's that five minutes where you say, okay, I'm listening to meditation um, or I'm you know, doing a yoga practice or whatever is creating space in your consciousness that something wants to emerge, there is something else which wants to come into your consciousness. If you are not allowing space in your consciousness for something else to come in, nothing will change. Mm -hmm. So it's your own permission. You have to give your, yourself permission to say, okay, I make um, this Saturday a self-care day as an example. It's your own, you need to create space in your consciousness. I didn't because I was too stubborn. I stayed stuck. And that is, you know, that obviously is, is causing all sorts of mental health issues. Um, but what I now understand in hindsight, if I would have left, if I, if I would have given myself just a little space, two minutes meditation, three minutes of silence or whatever it is, then your body, the, your being will want more.
because actually suddenly after a while after 21 days as we know a new habit forms then it's no longer some something you have to go after and push yourself to do it but suddenly it w wants to come to you my mm -hmm. day for example now nothing nothing would make me um not do my inner work nothing i i it's like it, it's like um an act of brushing your uh, your teeth every day it's part of my cleansing of my consciousness that's amazing so so a, so a um a, a tip for anyone watching is put into your diary now for the rest of yeah. your week yes a two minute calendar invite to do something yeah. that is related to your inner self yeah. a bit of self-love yeah. yeah you know what is exactly it's 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 about self-love it's it's actually honoring yourself enough to give you that time and space that's really what it is mm -hmm. if you if, if, if we need to shift our thinking am i worth it to have this two three minutes for myself yes of course i'm worth it we because have a, oh sorry pun yeah oh I was gonna, i'm sorry i didn't want to interrupt i was to say we actually had some questions um that yes. a few of us wrote for you um that i wanted to bring up and if i may make a comment Please, just, of course just I can't just see listening <laughs> just listening to you speak uh makes me do a lot of self-reflection right now because you're so calm and poised and i'm su i'm such a spastic uh hyper person <laughs> and my heart's like racing a mile a minute and i'm like <laughs> waiting to interject and i'm like listening to you and I'm like, good Lord, obviously whatever you're doing is working because <laughs> I got to have some of that. <laughs> um, so if I want to go down the list, Aiden and Christine and I actually wrote some questions. Um, I'll pull up one right now that I wrote because I think it's pretty important. It kind of piggybacks off of what I just said. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with just like triggers and, and noticing things. And I'm, I'm kind of pulling depression into this too because I think it there's you know obviously it goes hand in hand but um when should and i'm bringing this to hiring because you know a lot of us are in onboarding and recruiting and hiring so when should an employee speak up that they're struggling um are there are there common signs or triggers that they should look for because some people might not know that they are about to go through depression like sometimes it crawls i can speak for me personally you know i've had my battles in the past and you know recently i had about a month of a, a funk but i've been fortunate enough to notice you know my signs but i know it's not the same for others right so i notice my signs i mean is there something that people that are listening could look out for to know to get a head start on hey you need to take care of yourself this is this is time yeah usually um we feel it when we feel off inverted commas you know sort of like there's a sense of, um, could be a sense of dissatisfaction, maybe it's a hint of kind of depression, sort of like a little bit of a dark feeling. Now, to the point, to the question, you know, how can I speak up in business? This is why this is still very difficult because there is so much stigma around it by opening ourselves up to saying I can't cope with you know my job or my life or whatever um, it is almost expected we have to cope with everything um, therefore you know what you are doing and in the position you are you are really advocating um, that well-being at work emotional well-being at work and that's what is why it's so important and companies are now at least you know the bigger companies are employing well-being officers and creating a culture whereby um you know one talks about it and one has got um programs in place to help employees going through difficult times we have to recognize life is not just one plain, you know, linear um, experience. We all are hit at points with a tsunami. And that's when we need help and support. We cannot get out of certain situations on our own. I got help. I had some fantastic mentors. They held my hand while I was lost. 
and in vulnerability on being open there is so much courage only people who have courage can be vulnerable um i'm gonna pull christine's question up um christine uh, if you want to ask i'm gonna pull it up for you oh you're on mute christine Thank you, my dear. Uh, what I'm curious about is how an employer can support an employee with recent poor performance. So they're they're coming in late or they're not living up to their expectations, yet they might be having some mental health issues with just family problems. Maybe they're going, they have a sick relative or a sick spouse or, or maybe it's financial situation, but they're having mental health, but they're also not performing. Where as a leader, where do you start to hold them accountable yet support them? What suggestions do you have for that? In, this is really depends on the culture of each business. Um, in my role as vice president um, and being in charge of 90 people at the time, um, I would seek to my direct report a very open conversation. I would, you know, I had um, team members which went through difficulties, losing a parent um, or going through divorce. And we talked, we, we were open and I provided, or the company, I, the company provided the necessary support. And sometimes it is just simply giving some space um, and not pushing um, more stress on the individual. So it is, it comes back to emotional intelligence and it comes back as a heartfelt leadership. We are human beings. We are each on a journey of my mastering life. And sometimes we need help and support. Um, so therefore, I, you know, I always say to um, people in, especially the younger generation, um, some of them um, who I mentor, um, really, when you look for a job, investigate the culture of a business, of an organization. What do they stand for? What values do they have? Do they actually care for their employees? Um, and I know that it's becoming more and more important because life is and has is becoming more and more complex. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I, I'm just going to just throw this out there that especially since COVID and everything that's happened, mental health is the buzzword and all, a lot of companies are, are pushing that they, you know, are pushing healthy um, eating and healthy lifestyles and mental health support and work-life balance, but it's all lip service. Yes. Our industry has not changed. Yeah. And you know, that's very accurate. And um, actually I have a question that, goes with that. So I want to bring that up because it, there is a lot of lip service out there. And I think that um, there's a, a very big fear for retaliation with employees. You know, um, I think there's a lot of them out there that might be going through something. They're just scared. Like if they bring it up, maybe their their boss will not think that they're a good employee anymore. Or maybe if they need some time off that they'll be fired, right? There's that fear of retaliation. Mm -hmm how should uh employees battle this fear because it is real you know because some of them might be hearing what we're saying and saying yeah but i might lose my job well, what do i do sorry just before claudia does chip in just, sorry claudia to, to jump in here i'm just conscious of time with our conversation prior to this starting okay so um if, if are you happy to answer this one claudia you've yes. got a little bit of time and then uh -huh. we say Absolutely. goodbye tom i'm happy to answer this one it's an important okay. question because yes, there is so much, yes, there is fear, um, fear of losing the job, fear of um, you know, yeah, being rejected by my boss. Um, and this, is, this cannot be answered as a, a carte blanche because every situation, every person is different. Um, I encourage anybody who goes through the situation um, of mental um, issues, to seek a conversation if they feel the they can. But again, not every boss, not every company has got that culture. And when 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 it is 
you know, sometimes it's it's a bigger issue which needs to be addressed. It's like, am I actually happy in my job? Is that what I'm doing actually in alignment with who I am and my my journey in life? Because sometimes we can hang on to a job because we don't allow ourselves to even consider that there could be something else much more in alignment with the the status of our own um journey going through life i don't know in uh, um you know some of you may be familiar with rudolf steiner and he um puts our life in seven year cycle and each cycle has a specific way of us embracing life and sometimes we ignore we hold on to the past and want to bring the past into the future and that creates stress so sometimes we have to take the mirror and look into the mirror and ask ourselves you know what is that i want and this is a deep question because when you honor what you want you may need to make some changes and when we are instable to make changes is even more complex Now, the good news is when we take ownership of how we feel, acknowledge it, we are having a bad day, acknowledging that we are in a, in a, in a dark place. It's the first thing is the moment we can acknowledge, we are opening a new space in our, in our consciousness for different thought patterns to come into our into our consciousness so it's a very it's a very personal journey and anybody who feels the calling to investigate their own situation take the courage take yourself on your hand walk yourself to your own freedom it's there what what a what a way to end that uh, Claudia's contribution to this. Um, Claudia, I, I just want to say, I, I know you have to go. I just want to say a quick and massive thank you um, for all, for me, and I'm sure I can speak to everybody else here, um, your insight. And, and again, every time I talk to you, I feel so much calmer afterwards. I don't know about you guys. Um, but yeah, just again, thank you so much. I, I hope that this isn't the last time we get you on the hiring lens, to be honest with you. I'd love for this to be something that maybe we look at again in the future. Um, but thank you so much for me. I don't know if you guys want to say anything yeah. before Cardi jumps off. Thank you very much. And same with Jeremy. <laughs> we are the same people and I'm going, oh, <laughs> just listening to your calming yeah. voices. Like you should just cre uh, create recordings for people just go, to listen to. Go listen to previous episodes and see the difference and <laughs> how manic it is. <laughs> you, you, you are so gracious. But I would like to share with you my appreciation for inviting me and for you having the courage to really bring that topic to the, you know, into the awareness of, of your industry. It's so important. And I, I um, think we all have to do what is right for us and for humanity because out there it's a very intense time right now. So thank you very much for um, your courage to bring this topic to everybody and thank you for um, allowing me to be with you today. Thank, thank you so you much, Claudia. Thank you. Have a good thank weekend. You, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For anybody that is obviously joining us still, I just want to I just want to make it clear. If you do have any questions for Claudia, please do still put them in the comments because I will make sure personally that Claudia gets every single one of them. Um, she's always always willing to give up her time and answer any questions and give any guidance that where where she can. So um, don't feel that now Claudia has had to jump off the call that your opportunity to ask her a question is now no longer available because it certainly is. So please do if you've got any questions, if you've got any que uh, sorry statements that you want to make to Claudia, I'll personally make sure that she does get them i do i do Personal. so i want to uh, ask you to put this on your list and then also everybody out there and i'm going to address robert's comment here because this is a great comment but um uh for claudia that's our claw claudia 
<laughs> my American <laughs> accent. <laughs> Claudia, Claudia. That's the one. There we go. For Claudia, um, what she came from luxury hospitality. She knows the insanity of our world. And uh, what I would love to know from her, from understanding our world, and then now understanding so fully this mental health and this balance, I want to know what she would recommend to hotel leaders on how they can, in one, do it for themselves and also uh, create a culture. What would she do different running a hotel that to, to make sure everyone has this balance and, and can yeah. take time? Because when you've got the call-offs and when you've got the, the overbookings and when you've got all these things happening, it's, a, it's easy to say, make time for yourself. But we mm. all know we've been saying this for decades and it's hard to do. So I would love to know as a leader, what would she do differently? And if you're doing something awesome in your hotels, I'd love to see it in the comments or in your, your businesses where if it doesn't have to be a hotel, um, what you're doing. Now, if it's okay, I'd love to talk uh, to Robert here in this great comment that he yeah. talks about. How he pull walks back around. Up. Yeah, the, the office three, uh, he, he says, I've adopted taking a minimum of three to four walks around the office complex, 10 minutes a day, each day, uh, just to get away from the desk and listen to some heavy metal. I love that. <laughs> I want to know exactly what's your at bat song, Robert. What is that one heavy metal song that gets you to hit a homer um, that clears his head? It's amazing how refreshed and clear my thoughts are after simply stepping away and only for 10 minutes. And he encourages yeah. everyone in the office to do the same. So that is another great thing. When you're in a culture of trust where people know, hey, they're not going to be looking at me if I go and take this walk or if I take this minute to meditate. And I'll tell you, one time I went to uh, Marriott headquarters and I saw the sleep pods. And I'm like, what the hell? There's these sleep pods. And I'm like, who's going to get in a sleep pod when Mr. Marriott could walk by? But that's the culture of trust that they had there. They had walking treadmill desks. They had all these different things. So in, a, in an operating hotel, that's a little harder to do. But there are things you can do. I want to give one more shout out to Ann Savage. I always say her last name wrong. But she's in my private club, the Crown Society. One thing she has at her hotel is she has a Hawaii room. The, the back of the wall is all uh, a picture of Hawaii. It's a mural of Hawaii. She literally has a box in the room with a sand and a beach Aaron uh, chair. Um, and so you can sit, you put some meditating music, listen to the waves. She even has on the, the channel, it um, live streamed into Hawaii's beach. That's a place <laughs> wow. where, you know what? If you just had a difficult interaction with a guest, I'm going to go to Hawaii for a minute. Yeah. Is that cool or is that cool? I love that's, that. pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We're, I guess I'm a neat freak. I'd be nervous about the sand getting like, all over the place. <laughs> oh, Robert, says, Robert says, Thunderstruck ACDC. Now, if I was thinking ACDC, it would be you shook me all night long. Woo <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you and Robert could uh, could get into favorite ACDC songs. <laughs> yeah. They've, got, they've got a few. Everybody, share your at bat song. What is it? Oh, yeah, what okay. We are at bat song is the song that pumps you up so intensely that you Oof. can hit a homer. Mm. Oh my! God. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to. I'm not gonna be able to think about it on the live show, Christine. That's I'm gonna tough. Into the comments. Aiden, just just think of something to say it. Um, I mean, I, it I guess. Me. I mean, I um. Gosh, uh, Shy Effects original Nada. <laughs> okay. Do, do you know what? Actually, yeah. I I've got um Jimi Hendrix. Um, I forgot what it's uh, the, the Watchtower song. Um, uh, basically, I've been listening to it every time I'm in the car at the moment. I need to feel a bit amped. That's the one I go to, Jimi Hendrix. So yeah, that's that's me at the moment. I'll send you I mine, think Christine. I have a, you um... didn't know it. I'll send you okay. mine, Christine. Okay. You really okay. I don't think I have it like a pumped up, a pumped up song. But um, uh, and I but, want to know from everybody uh, watching and tuning in right now. Tell us your at bat song like Robert did. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Now I know yeah. some people might be having a heart attack going from calm Claudia, um, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> And this is actually dialed back, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd agree. This is dialed back. Is I, dialed I, think, back. Um, I think with regards to sort of that, I think the point about sort of the workplace, um, that's obviously where we're, we're quite well positioned. So obviously we talk to 
to candidates. And obviously, Christine, you're working with companies all the time. Um, and I think with regards to my thought process on this, um, and again, I don't, I'm not going to go into sort of too much detail or, or whatever, because it's not appropriate. But um, it took me, a, you know, just from my own personal perspective, it took me a while to be able to actually speak up. Um, and I'm not somebody that anybody would generally think that I'm uh, shy or somebody that, that wouldn't feel comfortable or confident enough to say something. But when it's something that that is so personal to you and it's so complex, it, it can be quite difficult. Um, but one thing I would say to anybody that is listening is the moment that I did, it felt like a massive weight was lifted. Um and it's that age old thing. You always think something's going to be so much worse than it actually is. Um, and that response, I think you'll be so surprised of how supportive and how comforting pe the people around you can actually be. Um, so anybody that is, I know it's so cliche for us to say this, but just talking from pure experience, taking that first step and talking to somebody, it will change everything um, and it will put you on the right the right road to to get to where you need to be um right. just take that first step that's what that's and, what i'd and, say from from my perspective and what i want to uh, clarify there is that doesn't mean telling everybody at work that doesn't mean uh but just finding somebody like Cla Cla claudia i don't know why i can't say it right claudia claudia <laughs> uh finding somebody to confide in and talk to that doesn't mean you have to tell everybody at your work that you're struggling with that and if you want cho choose to you know that's up to you but um that that doesn't mean uh putting it out there on social media there there's like you know if i want to kind of comment on what thomas said because you know when you shared with us, gosh, it must have been like five months ago, you're going through some some things like I empathize with that wholeheartedly because I feel like almost like a clone of you because um, I I mean, I've been pretty open about struggling with things throughout my life. And I went, you know, like this, gosh, it might have been a decade since my last like real bout it was like when I was in New York. But, you know, I had a little bit of a funk recently. But I mean, I completely empathize. And I think sometimes when people see us for who we are, we seem very mm -hmm. extroverted and happy and we have to be because that's our job, you know, and I am relatively a happy person, person most of the time. But that doesn't mean you can't just look at someone and think, oh, yeah, like Jeremy, he's like that guy. He's out there laughing, having fun. Thomas, he's out there doing videos and YouTube. He's he's cool. He's, he's fine. Doesn't suffer through anything. Right. That's Life like perfect. what or christine i mean come on like <laughs> but but like it, like my, my point is once you start talking to people to kind of go back to what thomas is say, saying and you actually share with some people your loved ones or friends or people or confidants you'll realize that there's more people that are going through it than that are not yeah you know? and, and i mean i could say just from personal experience just recently when i was hanging out with a bunch of buddies after you know i kind of stayed away from social settings for a couple of months when I was going through some things, I didn't really go out, you know, and as you guys know, I, I DJ, um, you know, months a month, I, I didn't DJ for like three months. I just stayed away because I knew the sign. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to go hang out with people when I'm not like in the right state of mind. I came back and started talking to people. They're, they're going through the same thing. So yeah. again, talking to someone and sharing that there's more people that can relate to you than that can't. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, completely. Yeah, what yeah. what what tips? Because I know we asked Claudia, but what tips do you guys have for maybe employers or companies right now that are either thinking about where their position is on mental health and well being within their businesses? Um, have we had any sort of suggestions? I know as as a business owner myself and somebody that's obviously suffered with it myself, it's a massive um sort of focus for me but have you guys got any suggestions on what businesses could do at the moment maybe a tip um or something small that they might be able to implement one thing that um that i i know it's, I, sh I should shout out sharon critzo now at discover my bounce so if she ever watches this she'll be happy to say happy to see that we're uh i still have her in mind and uh shouting out her on the hiring lens but in all seriousness she and um, she has a company called discover my bounce and I was introduced to her maybe 18 months ago or so. And um, we've only just hired now in the last four weeks, as, as you three know. But 
I, I wanted to, from the moment I met Sharon, implement things that, that she suggested and have a well-being uh, webinar or a go-to well-being company that actually doesn't cost a hell of a lot of money at all, but it's just an added expense for a business to give employees that option of webinars or sessions or um tips and tricks and how to manage your well-being and and she has a company that i've mentioned discover your bounce which is amazing but one of the things she shared with me on a, on a webinar once was a well-being checklist and it's a it's an employer checklist where rather than in each one-to-one -one monthly you just go through work and how people are getting on and you ask them how they are you actually have mm. a checklist that you can bring up specific things that you have both agreed that you'll talk about or that not talk about, but that have been areas that you would like to talk about. And and maybe I will share in the comments the link to the wellbeing checklist that she shared with me. I think she won't mind doing that. It was a, it was a free piece of content. Um, and I think that's like the first step, just being open mm. to it and using the free material that's out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, love that. Well, for for me, one, the the basic human needs, if we can, as as corporations help our associates to be make sure that they have that. So sometimes that's a food program, lunch program, that sort of thing. So some of those basic things, those basic needs, because everything else is not okay if your your main um, basic needs are not met so those are some things you can do but here's something that i've been talking about a lot lately and that is really that time off it, i know as a general manager every year i gave back my time off i'm like thank you anyways but i just like to work so much uh, because I, i'm just that 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 crazy high performer and I and as a as a select service general manager we're so part of the operation that I know everybody else hurts when I'm not there to help and the same thing when anybody else takes vacation but as the mama I always felt you know I'm the mama I didn't want to leave them in that lurch so just thinking about this you know so many companies give you you could give me eight weeks vacation we never were able to take it so here's what I've been talking about, revolutionizing hospitality. I know we can do this better. If we had a task force and our management teams where you can say, you know what, I'm taking my two weeks on uh, June X through X, and then we're going to schedule a task force person for you. So not, not only do you have to worry about leaving and getting texts all the time during your vacation, you actually can leave and then the team isn't suffering and you can actually step away from the organization and refresh. This is the most easy solution to, to really put, put process behind these words that we keep saying. There's never going to be a time you don't need that task force team. There's never going to be a time where you don't have someone that's moved on or is on a maternity leave or um, um, uh, a sick leave or whatnot or a vacation. You're always going to need them. That's it's a so great easy. idea, um, especially yeah. with the management companies with larger yeah. portfolios that can afford to do something like that. That's like, yeah. you know, making it. Even if you're outsourcing it, like Peter yeah. Wenzel, he has his a task force yeah. team. Even if you're tapping into them for just when you need it instead of having your own team. You better trademark that before people take that idea, Christine. Yeah. Right I, I don't care. I'm writing it down now. <laughs> have it, do it. Just, just get out there and make it better for our industry because people are leaving in droves and this is the best industry in the world. <laughs> yep. I'd agree with that wholeheartedly. Yes. And how easy is that? I mean, if little old me thought of that, come on. Mm, little old <laughs> you. <laughs> The, the giant that is the happy pineapple. Um, <laughs> I, Jeremy, what about you, man? Have you got, a, you got any sort of small hint tips? Because obviously, again, you've come from that corporate recruitment, obviously, you, you know, being in-house and then obviously stepping out. So mm -hmm. you, you would have had both sides of that. That's uh, okay. That's going to be, this is, this is a, this is a challenging question. Cause I, I mean, honestly, Unfortunately, I don't really have anything that I've seen done recently that is that impactful. I mean, like Christine said, that's why I jumped in after what she said. Like, there is a lot of lip service. Now, I there there has to be stuff that's going on. I'm just saying personally, I haven't really seen anything like monumentally like 
earth shattering that's being done. That's why yeah. I was really passionate about actually making this episode happen. And the more we talk about it, because we are talking about it, like let, yeah. let's make no mistake. Like even having this conversation today, five years ago, I I wasn't hearing this yeah. really much I in, in, in our I, industry. I've been hearing about work life balance, and we're making this uh, industry better mm -hmm. for. I and, and oh, honestly, I see it just worse. Honestly, I, I mean, leader I've talked to this week yeah. is is at a breaking point. Every That's what I'm I saying. That's what I'm saying. But but the the fact that people can share that they're personally going through things, yeah, okay. has changed yeah. because I remember. I don't think I would have told anybody like live on social media five years ago no way are you kidding me mm -hmm. i would never have felt comfortable doing that i would not because right, there's right. like that set I, I don't know like maybe that's me personally but like there's like this sense of pride and mm -hmm. you know the harder you work the more hours you put in yeah, you know, i got that badge that. i'm 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 opening and i'm closing and i'm closing and then i'm coming in the next day like there's all that pride like you know so the fact that we're talking about it is definitely a step in the right direction but there needs yeah. to be more like tangible action points right of things that are being done and that task force idea is something that people can grab and do it you know me. you know yeah. and like yeah. i think that there's more discussion about work life balance and hours being cut back I'm, i am seeing that being yeah. being addressed more well um, i'll but, give you an example marriott international um put out that gm's a 40-hour work week and and they're you know cutting back and they're for there's not one gm i've talked to that's able to actually do it you know what oh. actually you know let me say something then because th that actually happened and it worked uh um, okay where okay <laughs> i'm gonna tell you no no this is i swear to you true story. i'll be really quick i'll try i'll try to be quick now this is a swedish company it was okay. h m so of course they're way more progressive than american companies yeah uh but when i was in new york city as a manager this is like uh, 2000 early 2000 2000 2001 around there um we were like losing managers left and right in new york city it was it was horrible and we were work and we were working like 60 hour work weeks i mean we we're doing clopens close opens it was bad and and then we i remember seeing this uh german hr leader um standing at in the corners of all the different stores like she'd come to 34th street when i was there and then i would be in fifth avenue and she'd be there and she's taking notes and finally we're like who is this lady what is she doing she was like this hr person from 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 germany so long story short after like a month of taking notes and watching all of us she made it mandatory and i don't i, I doubt i don't know if this is going on but at the time this happened she's like no more if you'd work past 40 hours at your salary manager you need to start clocking in and clocking out we're tracking your hours. And once you go past 40, like you're done, you go. So if you're like, if you're, if you have a Saturday and Sunday shift and you worked all week and you're, you clock out on Saturday and you have like one hour left, like, sorry, like you, you do that one hour, you go home and yeah. like, Oh, but what about, what about my managers or what about the team? It doesn't matter. And then, if, then she said, well, look at, if you can't get your job done within those hours, something's wrong you're not you're not doing something right so they made it like so strict that but we that, had to right go there. it was that's so right strict because you can't do your job in 40 hours you suck we so it worked though worked. we started clocking out no, we started like, work it worked though it worked it really did work maybe maybe for that company it, but, did, but, work. it did work it yeah. did work it did work it did work because i remember it, being like oh okay and then we just started like hustle i mean it i don't know like that was Honestly, it happened, but this was again how long ago? Twenty-two years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and our had twenty-four operation with call-offs for night audit. You know, and, and and but this this is the thing. I will say I will give the kudos to that they're saying we want our GMs to work forty hours. Just saying that is giving people permission to actually do it. Sometimes people are done with their work and they are they are very productive and they get their work done, but they're told you got to work a 55 hour work week or you're yeah. slacking. Yeah. You, know, mm -hmm. you know, so just saying it is is positive, but yeah. there's literally not many people who can actually do the job in 40 hours. But um, the fact that I couldn't say things earlier when Thomas asked me, that's like, I want anybody who's watching that is hearing things that companies are doing. If you can share yes. some things, 
please, please, mm -hmm. please share it in the comments because I will make a post. I'll take if if you have things. I don't know if any. Maybe we have nothing, and then we're we're right. There's nothing going on, and then unfortunately, no, there are. But if there is, and you see something, please share it so we can share it. Because that'd be really yeah. cool. Like all of us could share on our channels. Like look, look what this yeah. company is doing, yeah. and then please so share it with us. Because just yeah. because I'm not seeing it. That doesn't mean anything like share what we, the companies are doing and we'll, we'll post it yeah. not even on this live. Like I'm talking like if you see this on a replay, just share it so we can share it. So there's more awareness and, right. and more ideas. And, and uh, we do before have we close up. I would love to share one other idea because I think it might be the best thing. I, I've, I love this whole idea so much. So one thing I do is I do the welcome orientation for McNeil Hotels. And they're one of my favorite hotel management companies. And one of the benefits I get to tell associates about is their VTO day, volunteer time off. Now, we all know the science behind it and what volunteering in the community does for your soul, your mental health, the way you feel about yourself, all of those things. But many people, especially our line level associates, one, don't have the time or the money to take time off to go do those things. So they've never really even thought about it. But we know how that makes people feel when they do get to do those things. So McNeil gives every associate a VTO day and a DTO day, volunteer time off and diversity time off. So if they want to go volunteer at a pet shelter and walk dogs all day, they're going to get paid to go do it. If they want to march in a pride parade, they can take the day off with pay and go do that. They want to volunteer to talk at their school, son or daughter's school about their heritage. They can take the day off with pay to go do that. Each associate gets two days a year, volunteer or diversity. We have a couple comments um, before we close. I'd like to bring up. Um, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, go for it. Scott, as a limited yeah. service oh, oh. GM, I used to walk the parking lot every day. I always felt good when I came back at the time. I thought that was just because I was dutifully checking the quality of my property. In retrospect, my true joy was from getting away from the fray for a few minutes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty much going from what Robert commented on too. Yes, you know? love that. I think um, um I think sort of the the premise of that because uh, I think yes, we we do want fundamental change and don't get me wrong, I'm all for waving that flag for you know a mental health or well-being revolution within the the hospitality industry and i'm more than happy for you to use that as a tagline jeremy um yeah. but i think one thing that we we sometimes overlook are just those little things that we can do throughout the day it doesn't have to be something monumental or ground change or ground sort of breaking it can just be getting away from your desk it could just be looking at something funny from somebody that you know somebody sent you it could be i don't know if you guys have dogs but i know when i'm with my dogs and aiden i'm sure you're the same if you just take a minute and you play with your dog play fetch give them a treat rub their belly whatever it might be yeah. it could be anything it, it's just about giving like claudia said it's just respecting yourself enough and loving yourself enough to say do you know what you can take five minutes you can yeah. do that and yeah. if you need to pick up the phone pick up the phone to somebody if you want to I don't know. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be something monumental. And I'd say for any business owners out there, think about that in the same way. You could just do the little things and it just snowballs. Yeah. That's that's how I see it anyway. But I yeah, that would be my final thought. Yeah, I love to share. Uh, I just finished the book, uh, Keep Sharp by Sa Dr. Sanjay Gupta. He's a brain surgeon. And the whole book is about how to regenerate your brain at any age. And one of the things he talked about is sedentariness is now so severely impacting our health and our mental health as well that it's considered the new smoking now he said that's a little bit of an unfair comparison but that's what how bad it is for us he said literally even if you got up and walked two minutes uh, a number of times a day that uh, uh that would equal up to 30 minutes that is equivalent to going out and working out for 30 minutes so just getting up, setting your alarm for every hour to just get up and take a walk every two minutes, even if it's just go get some water. That's insane. That. That's that's that. Wow. And to be fair, it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, that's yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, it was a really well, great book for anybody out there. Well, guys, should we uh, should we wrap this one up? Um, yeah. So from, from from us, as I said at the start, and as I said uh, just a moment ago, if you guys watch this on replay, you you watch this on another day, you send it to somebody, um, 
and you have a question, you have a comment, please do put it on there. We do go back to them. And if you've got anything that you'd like to ask Claudia, I will make sure that she does get it. Um, again, massive thank you from me. This has been, um, as I say, something very close to, to my heart, something that I feel is incredibly important. And I know obviously uh, all of us do. Um, and again, if you're going through something, you need to talk to somebody, just make sure you do, you do it. As I say, it will be the probably the best decision you'll ever make. If you're struggling, if you need to talk to somebody, pick up the phone, find somebody to talk to, do it, because it will change it will change your life. Um, so no, that'll probably be my actual final thought. My name is Thomas Finn, uh, Managing Director of Edwards and & Finn and host of ENF TV, which is our YouTube channel. Uh, and thanks so much from me. Amazing. Thanks, Tom. Always a pleasure, everyone. And thank you for organizing Claudia to, to join us today. It's been, yeah, a really calming, enlightful conversation. And, and yeah, just actually sitting here and talking about mental health and well-being is the first step. And I think that's the, the big the big step for everyone and anyone that watches this. Just know that it's okay to talk about when things aren't okay. Um, love all three of you. My name's Aiden. Uh, I'm the Managing Director of Aiden Recruitment, as you all know. And um, thanks so much for your time and I'll see you all next month. Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to just give mad props to Claudia. Thank you so much if you're seeing this uh, for being here with us. You, I'm going to replay it and just listen to it and meditate because her voice is so <laughs> calm. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a great voice. But I've enjoyed this conversation so much. Thanks so much for everyone out there making our industry great again. I love, love all of you. And I know how hard you work. I'm Christine Trippi, author of Yes is the Answer and founder of The Wise Pineapple. I love you. And with that, I'm Jeremy Nichols. Uh, I want to say also thank you, Claudia, for joining us. Uh, it was definitely a, a great conversation, much needed. We've been kind of kicking the tires about doing this for a few months now. So to actually have it happen is is, is pretty cool. Um, it brought a lot of depth and uh, thought to the conversation. So I really appreciate you joining us. And I do think we should do it again. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for uh, making this happen. And um, gosh, it's been like, it's tough before we went on live. I think it's been like it's two yeah. years. I'm going to find out. We're going to have to do something. Two something years. Nuts. No. Incredibly. Well, because attack technically we started on Clubhouse and then we just like yeah. peaced out and went live. Is Clubhouse still around? It is. Uh, but it hospitality is, uh, people aren't on there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> They're not there. They're working. <laughs> no, <laughs> <right>. Too busy. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. used to be jam packed with, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> I want to say thank you. We of course do this every final Friday. And, um, if again, if you guys are watching, you have questions, just share them in the comments and we will make sure to get back to you. But, um, mm -hmm. until next time, talk to everybody later. Bye guys. Bye guys.